What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network with a reading of the Zero Link Bitcoin Fungibility Framework, Part Chapter 2, Part F, The General Schema. And here we see that Alice and Bob are the same user. However, the Tumblr does not know this. We have the initial input registration phase, which takes a few seconds or days. Alice has the Tumblr's public key for encryption. She provides the input in a premix wallet. She generates new output for the postmix wallet. And she blinds one of these outputs with the Tumblr's public key. The input proof and the proof, the change addresses, and the blinded output are sent to the coordinator, who then verifies the maximum input per registration is not reached. He verifies that the max input per transaction is not reached. He verifies if the blinded output has never registered. And he verifies each input, if it is not already registered for this round, if the UTXO is not banned, if the proofs are in order, if the transaction is unspent, if the Coinbase confirmation is larger than 100, and that it must be SegWit, and if, if it's from an unconfirmed tumbling transaction. And further, he is beware of the 25 mempool chain limit. He generates a un unequaled, he temporarily stores the unequaled and input proofs and change addresses, and then he signs the blinded output with the tumbler's private key. Then he sends the unequaled and the signed blinded output back to Alice. Then we shift to the connection confirmation uh, step. Only when the registered inputs is larger than the required inputs and a timeout of one minute. You st Alice stops using the tumbler if, confirmed, if confirmation if you've, is refused, and that is a civil attack. And e Alice sends the unequal lead to the coordinator, which he then verifies, temporarily stores in the confirmed unequals, and calculates the round hash the hash of all the registered inputs. Then it sends, the coordinator sends back the round hash to Alice. Then the confirmed output is equal, uh, sorry, when the confirmed unequal Ds are equal to the registered outputs, or the timeout of one minute and the confirmation unequals is larger than the required inputs, then we move to the output registration phase. Alice first unblinds the signed blinded output reconnects as the Bob identity, and Bob has the output, the signature, and the round hash sent with a, another anonymity network identity, that is Bob, to the coordinator, who then verifies the round hash, which he himself has created, verifies the signatures, verified that the outputs have never been registered and that they must be back 32, and then temporarily stores this output. Then, after the outputs equal the registered inputs, or the timeout is one minute, go signing even if there are missing outputs to identify them and ban them as they won't sign. And then we move into the signing phase, where we, have, where we first verify the round hash by recalculating the hash of all transaction inputs. Stop using server if this is the wrong hash. Then you verify the transaction of the input and output. And then you sign the inputs with your own private key. This is done by Alice and all the inputs of the private key. Then this, of course, the transaction came from the coordinator, the unsigned transaction. Then Alice provides the unequal D and the signature and input index. And the coordinator verifies the unequal D, verifies each signature against the inputs, unequal D and index, and temporarily stores the signatures. Then we move to the next phase, only when signatures are equal to the requested inputs, and then we broadcast the transaction, where the coordinator broadcasts the transaction with pushTX in its own Bitcoin node. If pushTX fails, the inputs spend in the meantime. And Pierce, that was the entire chapter two on the Chahomey and coin joins, and we've just finished part five of the general schema. Thank you very much for joining me here for the zero bit link, the Bitcoin fungibility framework reading and see you on the next show. Bye bye.